It's tea time! This is where we spill the tea. I mean, we're here. We're on the Jones Beach Boardwalk. Oh Dee Snyder's God. calling it. Wrap it up. We've been hanging out with the hot teas. The hot teas, by the way, are amazing. <laughs> Hashtag Long, Long Island, Island Life. Life. Cheers. Cheers. Welcome back to Long Island Tea. I'm Kristen. And I'm Sharon. And we're here to spill the tea on why we love being on Long Island. And uh, Sharon. How you doing? I'm doing good. How you doing? I'm doing good because we have a great show today. I mean, last week, I'm not going to lie, we got a little bit into self-absorption. <laughs> we, we were like, oh my God, oh, one year anniversary us. is so yeah. fabulous. I'm so excited. So, um, but we're back now and we're, we've got some really, really great content for you out there. And um, starting with how you doing, we're doing great because we went to the spa yesterday. Oh my God. Wasn't it amazing? And not just any spa. Aram. Yeah, we went with the, so we have the Fit Doc. Yes, our Fit right? Doc Fridays. Our Fit Doc Fridays that, that uh, was such the, an the team does with uh, Dr. Michelle C. Reed, who is our official health and wellness ambassador. And she's so awesome. Oh I love hanging God. out with her. I just love her. I love her. I don't know how lucky. We got so lucky. And to we did. We reached out to her, and she's like, sure, I don't know what we're going to do together, but let's do something. And she became our official health and wellness ambassador and now has her Fit Doc Friday show. Yeah, she's so awesome. Every Friday, she does the series for Fit Doc Friday. But, like, she just, you can tell she loves the experience. Yeah. You know, like, she has the best time she's doing it. She's also, like, a full pers- personality. She's like, oh, my God, right? Hello, welcome back to Fit Fridays. And she's a doctor. She has two practices. She has... Uh, she does like different uh, medical practices for um, school districts and football teams, and she's she's like everywhere. Well, we found her. Like, we found her during COVID on Newsday. On Newsday, yeah, she was doing their weekly presentations, oh, yeah. and we were like, we need her. Oh, she does like national presentations. Presentation. <laughs> <laughs> she does <laughs> national presentations all the time, and um, she so she does this Fit Doc Friday, and then. She was going to go she on wellness, on yeah. not just fitness, but wellness, wellness yeah. overall wellness. And was, the Aram whether Spa. Whether it's physical or mental or, yeah. you know. And so the Aram Spa reached out. They're a partner of ours. They reached out and said, we want to host you guys. And they were, and they were like, also, Kristen and Sharon, let's talk about it in the pod. So we were like, okay. <laughs> sure. Yeah. We were like, we'll do a <laughs> Fit Doc Friday crossover. Yeah. I love it. And uh, it's in Jericho. It's in Syosset. Yes, on Jericho Turnpike. On Jericho. And it was funny because it was like such a busy road. Yeah. Right. And then you pull in and it was like so peaceful. Well, and we talked about it while we were there. We're like, you literally feel the peaceful presence when you yeah. walk into their doors. And she's like, that was one of her missions when she built it. Yeah. The, she Dr. showed Park. us the before and after yeah. of that strip mall. It was oh a, it was a sad insurance like it's and, a strip mall and with a bar strip yeah. mall and then now it's like this beautiful fabulous Retreat. spa yeah. <laughs> and so Aram uh, it it's it's owned and run by Dr. Park and she by the way was well, she so beautiful Ugh. oh my god inside and out she I was like what how do you do this she's a facial plastic surgeon and she just like Literally. legit like legit. she's a plastic there's surgeon. an operating room in the yeah. spa <laughs> if you need a if you need a nose job or yeah. whatever too, she, she can does do it everything. right there she can the do spot. everything but she's gorgeous and she's Korean I mean she lives on Long Island but she's Korean um, and she so it's all about K-beauty K-beauty that and was the she, biggest yeah. thing yeah and she goes back and forth to Korea all the time and she brings back the latest trends in skincare and beauty and, and innovation and it, for, so it was totally gorgeous and then so we all signed up for the Everglow the Everglow treatment yeah I thought it was a facial we thought was a facial and that was the thing I was going to say like it's not your normal spa where there's massage therapy or anything like that it's all it's a lot of medical treatment and medical beauty and one of the things we did was the Everglow facial but I not what I expected not what I expected I kept on thinking like we were going to get 24 karat gold on our face (laughs) because it said (laughs) it said 24 karat gold so okay here's the thing with Aram Spa so they did this really it's very unique, which is what I loved about yeah. it. You can't get this experience anywhere else. And this is what I love about just Long Island and New York in general is that the culture and the... Oh, and so diverse. It's yeah. so diverse. And uh, so Dr. Park, she came up with this a year ago. So she was selling her, celebrating her one year anniversary. You know what I loved about her? She was the first female sur- plastic surgeon on Long Island. Yeah. That Isn't was that, amazing. Wasn't that incredible? And she became a partner in her like thousand person plastic surgery you know, physicians group while she had three babies, three babies in four years, in four years. I was like, 
girl. girl. <laughs> and then you look at her, and she's stunning. She looks 27. Yeah. And she, she's beautiful. beautiful. Ugh. <laughs> We're both like, oh, and, and also just articulate and kind and brilliant. Oh. So she opened the spa a year ago, so she was celebrating her one-year anniversary. That was so, we're so like, awesome. Oh, yeah, we were both celebrating. And um, anyway, so we thought we were going to go in for a facial, which I, you know, which means the slathering, slathering on yeah. lots yeah. of different products and you know, maybe a scalp massage. Mm-hmm. And then they're like, okay, we're going to put you in the zero gravity chairs. So you have this tea ceremony. Which, that was incredible, right? Right. So that it's Korean culture to have these tea ceremonies. Mm-hmm. You know, like she explained it and compared it to us going out for brunch yeah. or cocktails yeah. or whatever. She's like, in Korea, they do, they go to tea ceremonies or tea houses and do yeah. tea tastings and things like that. And I thought that was beautiful. Yeah. And it was a place for them, for women or men, to sit around a table and go through like a, a beauty boot camp. Yeah. Or mm-hmm. um, do like a... A Q and A with Dr. Park, right? You and can ask her anything, and she's like, again, a, kind of a big deal, big deal. And to get this kind of consult, I mean, you don't just get this. And so you go to this tea ceremony, and she does groups between four and ten. And we thought it was great for like bridal showers or whatever. Um, she even know, said like holiday family holiday, retreats. She's like, people cry. Yeah, she's like, it's like a big together. open up, like talk around the table and just oh talk about what you're thankful for and what you're and happy for. She had for. an amazing charcuterie board there. Uh, oh. During the it summer, she has like lobster rolls and wine. So all of that's going to be on our Instagram if you want to see the charcuterie board. And it's also on uh, the Fit Fridays episode where Brie and Caroline are going to um, like showcase the whole Dr. Reed portion. But so we're like, okay, ready for our facial. And then she's like, you put you in the zero gravity chair and we're going to numb, numb your numbing face. cream. Mm-hmm. And we're it's gonna, like medical grade numbing cream. We're like, why are you numbing our face? Mm-hmm. Why do we mm-hmm. need to numb it? And so the 24 karat gold thing is actually like a little stamp. That's it's like the a needles needle. that are in the, in it's the a, vial. It's like a micro needling thing. <laughs> and we're like, what? The needles are made of 24 karat gold. But Brie, like while I was getting mine, um, Brie kept on coming in and, and she's like, I'm just, like, when is the gold going to happen? <laughs> I want the gold for the Insta. And I'm like, it's not. The gold is the needle. <laughs> yeah. And and so what it does is it like uh, reduces the fine lines and tightens up your skin and uh, circulates the collagen or whatever. Well, they, the whole point of the needling is to get below the surface. Right. And to get down into the collagen areas. Yeah. And to break up the dead skin and rejuvenate your skin cells. Yeah. So the worst, I mean, it was amazing. And it, it didn't hurt. Did it, no. I, it didn't hurt And they all. even said, like, they didn't have to do the numbing cream. It's just more comfortable. Yeah. I, I didn't um, feel any of it. It's tolerable if you don't do the numbing cream. Yeah. I didn't feel any of it. I thought it was fabulous. And I loved all I the questions. I didn't feel my face for a good eight yeah, hours. Yeah, I was going <laughs> to say. And then, but the worst part was is that afterwards we, like, did the wrap-up with the Fit Doc. Like, hey, we're, we're here. And, and we're no sitting in our makeup. robes and no makeup. And <laughs> also... Totally red, splotchy face. I'm like, Sharon, hey. that just happened on like full social media. Social media. So I don't know. I'm kind of like, nobody watched that. Uh, but wow, what a cool experience. And I have to say, if you're really looking for something totally different and unique, especially around the holidays, even like, uh, it, so she calls it Gwali. Gwali, yes. Gwali together. And that's a Korean word for like intentional self-care with purpose with yeah. purpose mm-hmm. and i feel like that is so important especially as we are getting into the heart of the holidays 100 the hustle percent. and bustle and yes. the presence and the the schedules and the this uh, it, it gets so stressful wow what a what an incredible retreat oh amazing i was like she was awesome and and they do she does everything so if you are into injectables like botox or whatever she'll do it all she, and she customizes it she's not like oh here's i can stab a needle like she's a facial plastic surgeon yeah. so she looks at you and she's like here's what you need here's what, i'm like well the best part about the whole retreat was like the q a with her and mm-hmm. she's like ask me anything about your skin ritual or anything like that like yeah. what are you what are you looking for in in your experience here yeah. i mean i thought that was awesome just to be able to have that 20 minutes with her and just say like this is what i'm it's like a consultation, whether or not you're getting, you know. Yeah. Full and, and now I get K-Beauty. I mean, it's amazing. Oh, it's beautiful. It's very cool. And, it, and I love the K-Beauty because it's all like very forward thinking. It's all like gender neutral and cool. So anyway, uh, it's called Aram Spa, A-I-R-E-M. And uh, we'll put it all in the notes and they're a partner of ours. But it's in Syosset and it is truly like a sanctuary. Oh, it was, yeah. In the middle, so. What, that was her purpose too, like when she was building it, she said she based it off of a little 
like village outside of Seoul in yeah. Korea, where it's all about tea and yeah. beauty and self ritual and, yeah, and yeah. things like that. And she showed us like her her before and after pictures, but then also the inspiration. I know and that was that, awesome. Was, I mean. You know, just when you think you're, like, successful and you're accomplished and you're doing a lot of stuff, you hear her and she had three C-sections in four years Ugh. and is the first female plastic surgeon, facial surgeon online. And then opens up a spot. I'm like, okay. I mean, you win. You win. Superwoman. We got it. And But also so kind. Oh, And yeah. so, like, just generous. Peaceful. Anyway, we sweet. love you, Dr. Park. You were amazing. Thank you so much. Uh, we are blown away, and I do definitely feel the difference in my skin. I do, too. I mean, I felt it all day. I was like, finally, last time, I'm like, i gotta, I got to wash this off. Um, but it was like, because I felt it working all night long. Yeah. But I do. I feel like it's plumped up plumped a little up. bit. Yeah, in yeah. fine lines. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, so what wine are we drinking this week? We are drinking Raphael Estate Malbec mm -hmm. 2017. The Estate Malbec is structured wine with rich fruit flavors, a medium body, and balanced acidity. Hand harvested, wild fermented, and bottled unfiltered and unfined, showing notes of blueberries, venison, and slate minerality. Blend with fine tannins and contribute to a lingering finish. Wow, that's intense. I feel like we had I this before it. with Chris, actually. Did we, did we, 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 did we, we were talking about the, the venison. Oh, the venison. But I feel like that's probably a, in a, a lot of, yeah, yeah, in a lot of the Malbecs. Maybe that's why I love it. I don't know. Yeah, it's good. And Raphael is one of the most beautiful vineyards. Oh, 100%. And you know what? I went there. The first time I went to Raphael was in the winter because they had this awesome fireplace oh, yeah. upstairs. Oh, my God. It, and it's so it's year round. This is a great place to go. So thank you to Long Island Wine Country for sponsoring us. Yes. Um, 57 distinct vineyards uh, on Long Island. And you can go to liwines.com or to the podcast and um, – and uh, yeah, and get to uh, the wine of the week deal. So, and we're coming up on a, another remote. We're going to be in Pominox. I know. Soon, I'm super excited really about cool. that. We love the remote. I know. I, mean, I do I just because love it. I, I, because I get to learn so much, which is so cool. Um, so we're also in November, which means we are in Shop Small yes, month yes. because we're all getting ready for the holiday season and. You know, everybody's telling you, don't wait, people. No. Do not wait. Go and shop don't small wait. and get, if you like something, don't wait for the sale this year, you guys. Just do it. Um, so we're uh, highlighting two chambers of commerce, as we told you last week, brought to you by Suffolk County uh, Economic Development and Planning. Thanks to Suffolk County. Um, so the two chambers are East Hampton Chamber and Montauk. So you've got some stuff on East yeah, Hampton. Yeah, I got some stuff. I got some tea on East yeah, Hampton. Yeah, what's the tea on East Hampton? So if you go to EastHamptonChamber.com, you can find a list of their events. But specifically this year, we are talking about the East Hampton Chamber of Commerce presents the 28th Annual Hamptons B&B &B in Restaurant and Attractions Holiday Tour on Saturday, December 4th, between 12 p.m. and 6 p.m. This unique opportunity will once again open the doors of the Hamptons for the special holiday season experience for local and international guests. The trees will be trimmed, the garland and wreaths will be hung, and the seasonal spirit will be so overwhelming, you might just want to break out into Carol. Oh, my God. Is that that is it? so cute. <laughs> I don't know about that. Um, admission is $15 for early bird and $25 general admission. First 100 registrants will receive a customary holiday gift. Ooh. Isn't I mean, that we're talking sweet? about holidays in the Hamptons. Are I mean, this is our life. Really? I mean. You don't get any better This than is hashtag that. Long Island Life. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and there's a couple of businesses in the Hamptons that you recommend. Yeah, so Hamptons Hand Poured. It's um, we are yeah. a partner with them. They founded by a Hamptons native. Each candle is poured by hand in the heart of the Hamptons using 100% high quality, clean burning American grown soy, plant based fragrance oil, and cotton wicks. And, and by the way, we have a, a, a very exclusive Discover Long Island Hamptons Hand Poured candle, mm -hmm. which is almost sold out. Yeah. So it's, go to shop.discoverlongisland.com or whatever, like today, and get that. My dad bought most of them. Yeah, but we, we <laughs> reordered after he did. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. oh, re okay, my dad um, like, literally bought all the candles. And They're then amazing. it's our Where You Belong candle, yeah. and it's uh, made from sea salt, honey, and citron-scented candle collaboration. Yeah. Uh, the Town Line Barbecue, this casual dining joint, smokes their dry rubbed meats on site and serves up plenty of house-made sauces, southern-inspired sides, and whiskey. Surround yourself with rec reclaimed barn wood, cozy fireplaces as Townline Barbecue hosts local bands and trivia nights. That's so fun. Yeah. T I mean, yeah. Townline Barbecue. You you can't miss it. You can't you, miss it. It's right on Montauk it's, Highway. Yeah. Right yeah. when you go to the Hamptons. Um, also, I, if just, just go to uh, easthamptonchamber.com because 
they have like the Santa parade. Yeah, they have a ton of events. They have stuff literally every weekend. So mm -hmm. um, the ha holidays in the Hamptons. And here's a funny thing. So Montauk Chamber of Commerce, people don't realize Montauk is part of East Hampton. The town of East it's Hampton. In, it's yeah. in the Hamptons. Mm -hmm. It's branded Montauk, but it, it's still the Hamptons. So they have a really cool event. Um, light the light on November 27th. And oh, this amazing. is where, this is a big deal. Mm -hmm. You light the Montauk Lighthouse. It's amazing. I mean, this is where you like bump in, you're like rubbing shoulders with Paul Simon. Right, you know? right, he played last time. Yeah. yeah, I mean, you never know. Yeah. I mean, the the who's who comes out to light the Montauk Lighthouse. I love it, it is really special. So that's November 27th from four to six. You've got to do that. Um, and then they have some great businesses, the Harbor Pet, um, which is- This is I so mean, cute. Oh, come on. <laughs> I'm such a dog mom. I know. Do you, I, I swear to God, I buy more sometimes for the dogs. Holiday gifts for my dogs. That's so funny. <laughs> I, I love do it. my kids. I love it. But they have great holiday, really special things for your furry friend, um, toys, treats, accessories, all that. So Harbor Pet is amazing. And then Joni's Kitchen is, this is a staple. So not Have you been to Joni's Kitchen? It's no, amazing. No. Oh, yeah. It's awesome. I, I mean, I may have. I you probably like, haven't just didn't realize. Yeah. Cause because they're open year round. Yeah. Cause not everything is open year round. Right. So when you, you know, when you go, when you go to Montauk, talk if you go during off season you know if you go to Joni's kitchen yeah it's going to be open it's year round it's walking distance to the beach and montauk village it's this like hip eatery that serves up creative breakfast offerings and sandwiches and all that stuff so uh montauk oh here's where you go if you want more information montauk chamber yeah. Dot com. Yeah. and by the way montauk chamber great great partners of oh, ours excellent. as is yeah. east hampton chamber and uh, we're happy to support our local chambers our local businesses and um shop small go into your local downtowns and thanks to suffolk county economic development and planning yeah. for helping us to yeah. highlight those. That's awesome. Um, so we have a very, very special guest. I'm excited and nervous. Why are you nervous? Comedians always make me nervous because they always like pick you out of the crowd. <laughs> <laughs> They're like, you, seat 11. <laughs> well, we got reached out to by a comedian, Tom Kelly, who is actually a famous comedian from Long Island. We have so many famous comedians oh on Long Island. But uh, Tom Kelly is one of our, you know, home claim to fame, Massapequa born. Uh, I think he maybe was born in Brooklyn, but raised in Massapequa. Um, and he's with us today. So welcome, Tom. So here we are with Tom Kelly from The Tom Kelly, if you're on Insta, right? Well, you have it's Tom Kelly Show. Tom Kelly Show. Uh -huh. Tom, Tom Kelly's an awful name because if you follow the wrong Tom Kelly, you're following a real estate agent in Missouri uh, or <laughs> frankly there's other there's also six other comedians named Tom Kelly I got yeah. the worst name yeah, for it's, somebody as talented as me yeah it's pretty basic but luckily you are not basic because That's right. you are from Long Island but you live in the city right so I'm born in Brooklyn. If the government asks, I still live in Massapequa, even though I pay my taxes in the city. I have an apartment in the city, but um, I think this is the nature of half of the guys and girls who are from Long Island and especially my town of Massapequa is I'm out three to four days a week. Uh, you know, like right now, the nature of my comedy work has been hot and cold. So uh, I'm spending uh, probably two full days a week in the city and then uh, maybe two full days a week at my parents and then probably another two full days on the LIE driving. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I this is why I love your podcast. I am rediscovering Long Island because of the pandemic. I've been like my my line about my career was it's not I didn't I lost a lot of my comedy and TV work and it's slowly starting to come back now. But I did not have to move home with my parents. I was staying with my parents. And that's an important mm -hmm. distinction. Mm -hmm. I wasn't Big living difference. with yeah. them. I could have left whatever I wanted, but I was staying with them. And I was doing a lot of long walks on the beach. And I look up and, oh, my gosh, your podcast Yay. is advertising with a Yay. plane. A plane, an aerial. You saw the aerial <laughs> advertising. That's so awesome. I saw it at Jones Beach. And here's my question for you. When you advertise for the Long Island Tea podcast yeah. with a plane, did they let you ride in the plane? No. no. Uh, plus, I'd be like, nah, I'm good. I don't know. Oh, I wanted to be there like this. No. Prayed float. Well, I don't know. <laughs> 
So guess what our new marketing thing is that we're doing? Because again, we we're Long Island. We're we're so we're, submarines. We're imagine. doing submarines. No, what? you're you're gonna you're gonna be I think impressed. Um, because so we're supposed to we're charged with promoting Long Island and letting people know about Long Island. And we went through the same thing you went through during COVID, where yeah. we stopped advertising. Mm-hmm. Normally, we're advertising people all over the world. Um, so we have to do things that are creative because we're competing against like New York City and California. LA and California. Yeah. And um, so. In the whole month of December, we have a full page ad in every playbill on Broadway of every Broadway show, and think they're running at like ninety percent, ninety three percent occupancy. Yeah, that's awesome. So, and you're, you're sitting there for an hour. Right? Yeah. Uh, yeah. No, real estate prices are up about fourteen yeah. percent since the mm-hmm. beginning of the pandemic. Yeah. Don't you feel like you're already doing a good job? Yes. And it's all because of me and Sharon. I That's right. Podcast. <laughs> That's right. right. Yeah. Look at this. You're when welcome, Long Island. Start? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> New name for the podcast. You're welcome, You're Long welcome. Island. Yes. You're welcome. So, but that's the cool thing too is this podcast is not about like you know all, where to have a restaurant right. and tell us about your museum scene. It's really about life on Long Island. What it's like to live here and work here and be here. And and so we always say like I'm a transplant. Sharon is a native. Uh, yeah. I'm on the North Shore. She's from the South Shore. Yeah. She's I got totally teenagers. Tell. You can. I like for people just listening to the audio <laughs> version of this. Yeah, I can totally tell. Is it my sweater weather sweatshirt that gives it away? Uh, the leopard? The way, said, uh, the way you said sweater? Sweater weather? <laughs> nobody, yeah. nobody understood because we were at a conference just last week and I said, you know, I was telling about my co host and their chemistry mm-hmm. and I'm like, and how we represent all of them. And I'm North Shore and she's South Shore. I'm like, this is a big thing, which I didn't know moving here. Yeah. I didn't know anything yeah. like North and and it's funny how even within the neighborhoods it gets uh, yeah. divided. Like, uh, and again, not giving away my exact location, but if you go like in Massapequa, it's North America Road versus South, South America Road. Yes, it's North exactly. of Sunrise Highway versus South of Sunrise Highway. Or Montauk Highway, Highway uh, or the tracks. You know, yeah, like even tracks, down on the South then, Shore, it's like, are you and, are you below the tracks or above the tracks? Oh. Yeah, are you from North Massapequa, South Massapequa, East Massapequa? Is that even a thing? Are you just from regular Massapequa Park? Park. Proper? Are you from <laughs> Massapequa Park? Uh, by the way, you know you're really from Long Island if you could do Massapequa, Massapequa Park, Avenue, Bill Copeg, Wonder, yes. and Babylon. Yes, L-I-R-R. Yes, Wanta, Wanta next. I thought it was sauce and egg and cheese on a roll. What, oh, oh, no. God. What do you no. always say? Bacon, we egg, need and cheese. Bacon, and cheese on a roll. Yeah, I don't know. Salt, pepper, ketchup. So. <laughs> yeah. Bacon, egg, and cheese on a roll. We that, need no? to get Kristen a Connecticut podcast. So, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's what they always say is that the North Shore is like, yeah. I'm from Arizona. So, I don't know. Like, I'm just complete West Coast coming it's in. So like, funny. Are you proud to be? So, I had a professor in college, uh, Professor Ray Forey. Uh, I went to college in Connecticut. You ever hear of Yale? <laughs> yeah. Well, I went to school right down the block from there. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> And Ray Forey, who uh, I, he once said to me at the end of my senior year when I was thinking about staying on Long Island or moving to the city, and his line was, Tom, Long Island is someplace where you're from. It's not your fault you were born Aww. there. And then he goes, nobody moves to Long Island. You move from Long Island. And you're the first person I've I met. Did. You do move. Why did you move to Long Island? Uh, I moved actually for this job. They did a national for search. For this podcast, she was Yeah, for say. the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> um, because, you know, for, from if you don't know it, I mean, I think Long Islanders have that perception. I don't know, because if you don't know it, all I knew is that the Hamptons were here. Mm-hmm. It's connected to New York City. They have the greatest schools. I have two daughters. The schools mm-hmm. here are even better amazing. than they explain them. <clears throat> it, it's an amazing place to live. And for me, coming from the desert, I mean, they make fun of me because I love winter. Like, I'm so oh, excited. She can't wait. I She's love like seasons. It's like a Norman Ro- Rockwell. Yeah, it's <laughs> like a Norman. I live in like a Norman Rockwell painting. It's crazy. And it's nuts. It's it's like Norman Rockwell meets um, Mayberry with all mm-hmm. the weird, like, little village politics. And I'm here for it. She I loves love it. it. I think it's but funny. So, uh, so, and it's funny. I talk about this on the Tom Kelly Show podcast, which I call self-help comedy. And I've been doing it on my social media. Uh, my Instagram has been a big Long Island commercial. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. And it's funny how part of me really wants to be on Long Island around the natural beauty. Jones Beach is the best kept secret mm-hmm. in New York State. And then I went up to Kelmset State Park. Mm-hmm. I didn't know about that till I was 40 years old. Yeah. You know, like I only just discovered it. I'm walking How there. How did like you pronounce it just now? Yeah. I, I know I say it wrong. No. Kelmset or Kelmset? I say Kelmset. I don't even know where that is. Where is it? Well, we don't want to tell you. Yeah. That's the, <laughs> it's a secret. Oh, that's, to that's total out. Long Island. Like, Long Islanders are like, uh, 
we don't want any more visitors. Don't tell anyone about it. These mm -hmm. are our beaches. These are our parks. And then they're, in the next breath, they're like, we're not getting our fair share of what you do. Right. <laughs> but you know what's funny, Tom? Well, well, listen, and here's my problem with your podcast and the influence you've had on real estate value is I have banked <laughs> all this cash waiting for the real estate market to crash mm -hmm. to buy a house maybe in Massapequa. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then suddenly prices, I mean, the world is falling apart and Mass and Long Island is in more in demand. Yeah, yeah. it's crazy. But I was just going to say to you, you said before, like everybody's leaving Long Island, but I left Long Island and I feel like people who leave Long Island always come back. Yeah. You know, look at you. You're trying to come back to Massapequa. Are they trying to come back? I mean, every time I go to Arizona, we have a ton of Long Island. I buy, every time I go to Jones Beach or Fire Island or Montauk, I, I love to shop. So mm -hmm. I buy everything that says, yes. you know, Hamptons, Montauk, everything Fire on Island. it. Yeah. <laughs> My entire wardrobe is like Long, Long Island, Island merch. <laughs> like it villages. Yes. And um, I'll travel and, I'll be, and I don't even think about wearing it. People stop me everywhere I go. They're like, whoa, whoa, whoa are you from there? Like, yeah. or is that just a shirt? I'm like, no, I live there. And people stop me everywhere, California, everywhere I travel. And they're like, mm -hmm. I love it. I grew up there. I wish I could go back. I yeah. left. And now people, once they leave, they can't afford to come back. They can't afford it. It's well, crazy. And that's why my father says he'll never leave or go permanently. Mm -hmm. uh, but here's my thing about Long Island people. And when you wear Long Island, like I'm wearing my uh, Greenport. Green port. Yes, thank you. Love it. And just because I wanted to fit in with the North Shore listeners, your North Fork listeners, yes. your trashy <laughs> South Fork listeners, go buy your own shirt. Uh, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm I, the I, South I, Shore I girl. Yeah. Well, I, I you, mean, come but on. You, you bought North Fork stuff. I do. I have a Greenport sweatshirt just <laughs> like, like that, buddy. Uh, what are you talking about? We all wear all of it. I love, no, I love wearing my Massapequa High School sweatshirt yeah. whenever I'm outside of New York because then all these people who I don't want to talk to when I'm at home. <laughs> Will oh. talk to me when I'm far away from home. Yeah. As a Long Island comedian, you talked about your name, Tom Kelly, being so common, and sometimes it's hard to stand out. But I think it's probably, you know, how you're. How do you stand out among all of the major famous? Yeah. Long Island is known for comedians. Famous people. Well, actually, and and I, one thing that I, I feel like you haven't quite tapped into yet is Long Island has a huge and borderline historic comedy scene. Hmm. Uh, Today, you can go to the best club on Long Island is Governor's. They own uh, uh, the historic McGuire's Comedy Club in Bohemia. Uh, they own uh, the original Governor's in Levittown. And then they own the Brokerage Comedy Club in Belmore. And then they do lots of pop-up shows. So comedy is alive and well on Long Island. Uh, what I find is being from Long Island, I'm part of a proud tradition. And that includes... Uh, Rosie O'Donnell, uh, mm -hmm. Ray Romano, uh, Kevin James, I think counts. I know he lives on Long Island now. All of those guys. Jim Billy Brewer, Crystal. Sandler, Jim Brewer. And Sandler did the movie on Netflix. It was an awful movie, but it was great if you were from Long Island. It's like a one-star movie, what was but the name five of it? stars. I remember it. it was the one know. he did with Chris Rock. Yeah. Oh, yes. That was awesome. Before. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, and Long Island is a... It, it sounds silly, but there is a culture to draw from uh, in general, with the exception of uh, transplants like Kristen. We are uh, we are generally second or third generation of mm -hmm. some form of ethnicity. We are, we're not living bitter lives, but we're descended from bitter people. Mm -hmm. And that makes Long Island funny. That's mm -hmm. a great that is description, a good way to put actually. It. Absolutely. So yeah, I, I know Discover Long Island is going to put that on the next plane. Oh. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> New banner. We're, we're not bitter. We just come from bitter people. <laughs> That's our new tagline. Yeah. yeah. My grandparents came on boats, you know, and they were miserable about it. And they never went back because it was always uh, better over there. But they didn't want to have that bubble popped. And here we are. Like, I'm half Sicilian. And, and if you don't know what Sicily is, Sicily is like the Alabama of <laughs> Italy. Yeah. You know, crazy. They say what's ever on their mind. Uh, like, my grandparents... At the age of 86, at the dinner table, uh, my grandfather shouts out, uh, Tommy, Grandma and I, we no make love for six months. And I'm like, what? <laughs> 86 <laughs> years old. <laughs> and, and the worst part is, I'm like, Grandpa, you're doing better than I am at 40. <laughs> Wow. And it's Sunday dinner, Grandpa. Yeah. yeah and they would argue about their <laughs> and what, and what, what are you supposed to do about this? Yeah. Oh, and they would talk in Italian. And, and I know I'd know what they were talking about. I don't speak Italian, but I speak fluent, broken English. Mm -hmm. OK, mm -hmm. so like the hand gestures, like grandpa would be like this with the big hands. <laughs> grandma would be like this with her fingers. <laughs> you know. So so wait, you went to college and yet you're still a professional comedian. How does your family feel about that? Not, well, I guess if you're rich and successful, they're happy about it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, rich and strong, you know, but no, I, uh, 
So the story of my career is uh, I college ended. I worked at, uh, I was an NBC page. Then I worked at Rosie O'Donnell's TV show. Mm -hmm. And then when Rosie ended, I couldn't find any work. Uh, you know, it was right in May of 2002. Uh, TV production was kind of down low. So I started doing comedy because I had nothing else going on. And by accident, uh, got a job ghostwriting for morning radio shows. Uh, a guy, Elvis Duran, who's big in Z100 in New York, helped me yeah. out with that. And speeding through the story, it was while I was doing a web TV show about quitting comedy is when I got a call from Rosie O'Donnell's office saying they had recommended me to Barbara Walters to be the warm-up comedian at The View. Wow. And wow. Yeah. It was supposed to last two weeks. And I lasted at ABC between 13 and 15 years, depending on when you want to stop the clock. Oh, wow. That's amazing. God. Yeah. I saw that well, on I, your bio. Yeah. And, and this is my thing on degrees is uh, the piece of paper came in handy three times. Once when I was a page, uh, they wouldn't have let me be a page without looking at the degree. Uh, and then, and I say this as the grandchild of immigrants who couldn't go to college. Uh, when I was interviewing for a writing job, there was a woman who was a snob. And she thought at that point, my career I was just a bar comedian. And I was working with a, uh, a great comedian who's a Long Island guy, Tim Crompier. You'll see his name pop up if you watch the comedy club websites. Um, and this snobby woman is like, well, I want somebody with a journalism degree. <laughs> and Tim, who is like Mr. Amityville, goes, yo, hey, I got one of them. SUNY or Westbury. I, I paid for it myself. <laughs> yo, I got it. <laughs> and it's just funny. And in that moment, uh, so it's good to have the paper. So my family, my family is very, very supportive for a family of people who don't think I'm funny. I was mm. going to ask you that because Thanksgiving's coming up. So I was going to ask you if your family thinks that you're funny and then – and or if you when you show up to like family dinner, are you expected to just constantly entertain like, people? Entertain people. <laughs> or they're no, like, no, shut up, no, Tommy, it's family, enough. <laughs> I don't know if you're like this with your family. I feel like uh, I'm only one portion of myself with my family. Uh, I like I am in therapy and I feel like everybody I know and grew up with should be in therapy. Uh, you know, again, half Irish. So I don't think we talked about feelings for the first 40 years of my life. Uh, <laughs> and now that I'm talking about them, I got a lot to process. Um, but my family, they're very polite. My, on my dad's side, they're proper Irish. Irish, And on my mom's side, they're, we don't want to hear about it, Italian. Mm -hmm. Oh. You know, you know, like it's, uh, you know, like it's, uh, my grandfather had a sister who was not talking to him since 1978 because he didn't offer to drive her to the airport uh, in a two-door <laughs> Pontiac Sunbird. Listen. Like, it was that kind of Italian. Yeah. Um, you know, and then when you go further outside the family circle, you know, like, I, I, like one of my stand-up jokes that I'm working on right now is I want some version of 23 and Me that actually blocks me from my super extended <laughs> family. You know? Yeah. I'm, I'm at a point where I don't like I don't need any new relatives, especially yeah. when the career is going well. And I'm afraid of the relatives I know about. Like I, I have a second or third cousin who at one point the impression was he was wanted by the mob mm -hmm. for something for a, <laughs> for a bad business deal. So, I, I mean, I'm nine, 10 years old and my mother's like, don't answer the phone if they're looking for me or your grandfather. Oh my gosh. And. And the worst part is it, it was I don't think the mob ever called for this guy, blah, blah, blah. It's everybody overthinking. But I'm like, wait a second. As as me I'm nine years old. I know where this guy is. <laughs> How does the mob not know where he is? That's why your mother was and telling you not to answer like, the phone. So <laughs> you talked about the governor's club where he, is your favorite place to play. What about the other venues? Like what like where are you normally on your comedy route? So I'm known for, but right now they're still rebuilding after the pandemic. I was doing a lot of TV work in the city. And then uh, honestly, right now, I'm just starting to work on Long Island again. Uh, governors and the, the three governors clubs are great places to see comedy on Long Island. And frankly, the place to see comedy on Long Island. Every now and again, you'll see a special show at the Paramount with a big name for somebody who had a limo driver get them out there. And I'm sure they're great, too. And I'm really the only reason I'm not endorsing the Paramount more is they're not hiring me more. Yeah. Uh, mm. So, Call so him. whatever stage I'm on is what I'm saying yeah. is the best. Uh, and you can get my dates, TomKellyShow.com. I'm sure there'll be something for Christmas. 
That'd be awesome. You know, and, and when you reached out to us, we were like, okay, because we, I mean, we get people reach out to us all the time. And, and so I was like, okay, let me, t- let me look into him. You're hilarious, yeah, by the way. We watched You're, I went so straight much. to your Instagram and I'm like, okay, this guy totally gets Long Island. Yeah. He's hilarious. He's, He's our, our people. vibe. Yeah. I have to, t- I have to ask you this because I am super fascinated about your time on The View because when I read, I'm going to be honest, when I read your bio, like I skim everything, right? So I was like, I thought you were hilarious. I watched all your stuff on Instagram, but I read your bio. I saw The View. I'm like, oh yeah, he was in The View. And I'm thinking like you were on The View. I didn't realize you were the opening comic for that many years. So what I'm hearing now, what I'm thinking is you have got stories about those women. Oh, I'm sure. And that to me seems like a crazy, that I feel like you've got stories. I do and I don't. Um, You know, I think the secret to my longevity there is also my, the secret to my longevity with my family is I kind of only remember the happy stories. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You block it, you block out, you're in denial. Yeah. And not even in denial is where I was, uh, one, I I promise you this, at, at that show and every other show I've ever worked on, the drama is generally overstated. You know, mm-hmm. like everything's seen through the prism of somebody trying to get hits or uh, ink, whatever you called it back in the day, you know, selling copies of page six or getting clicks on page six.com. The reality is, I'm, I mean, especially in front of the crowd, I was in charge of happy. And yeah. Yeah. it was happy in front of the crowd. I mean, obviously, I was in the room and had to be funny right after the Rosie and Elizabeth fight of 2006, <laughs> if you remember that, or 2007, whatever it was. Mm-hmm. We used to call it Nuclear Wednesday was Rosie's line for it. And uh, and by the way, while they were fighting and arguing, I was hilarious. I'll tell you that story. <laughs> Somehow that didn't make it into the view book, whatever. Uh, I had a joke at the time and it was, uh, uh, wow, folks, if you think this is awkward, I just watched Sex in a City with my mom and then went on with that joke. <laughs> Yeah. And yeah, the the stories aren't as good as you would think, but the the stuff that doesn't get covered is uh, during those years. Uh, Rosie O'Donnell was my uh, fairy godmother for everything good going on in my life. Mm. Uh, Whoopi Goldberg um, was like a mom to me for many years there, a comedy mom. Uh, Joy Behar, if you are from Long Island, if you put the liberal politics aside, uh, she is every crazy Brooklyn slash Long Island aunt you've ever had. You yeah. know, and she taught in, and she taught in public school in Windenhurst, by the way. Wow. Uh, Hasselbeck, de- uh, she didn't date, but she was very good friends with one of my college buddies. Um, and yeah, from I would say I knew every host from uh, the Rosie O'Donnell year to Megan McCain, who I only knew for one year, and every one of them was very, very nice to me. Um, and I'm very lucky to have had those years there. Back to you, Tom. So tell me about how long has your podcast been going on? When did you start it? And what do you talk about? So, so I mean, uh, two things. Real. First, uh, again, Tom, I call the Tom Kelly show the home of self-help comedy. It started as a wedding podcast, actually, with a mm-hmm. guy that you could have on your show, uh, Mikey Russo. Wait, you actually can it. officiate yeah, weddings. I read Mikey that on Russo. your bio. Mikey Russo, <laughs> write this down. My friend Mikey Russo, who's a celebrity wedding planner and now owns a gift shop made by Michael Russo in Cold Spring Harbor that embodies mm-hmm. the high class of this podcast. Cool. Uh, what happened was I owned a website, IHateWeddings.com. He was a celebrity wedding planner, and the gimmick was going to be he loves weddings. I hate them. Weddings should be canceled was my gimmick. And then we started the show in, I think, February of 2020. And then by March of 2020, I won the podcast. Like, it was just funny. Like, all the weddings got canceled, and it became a uh, don't worry, kid. You you hang on. <laughs> you got See this. you in 18 months. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, so we kind of broke away from that. And I started doing this as a real exploration of rebuilding my career. And Long Island has been and rediscovering Long Island has been so important to me during the pandemic. Uh, I started with all these long nature walks, uh, long bike rides and uh, open and all these state parks mm-hmm. I never had time to visit. Heckshire, Kelmset, uh, the, the Valley Stream State Park, uh, Jones Beach, uh, which is the best time to go is now to uh, May because yeah. all the 
rookies are gone and all the idiots who have iPhones and think they're DJing for everybody yeah. aren't there. <laughs> uh, and so I started talking about those real experiences and, uh, um, and that's sort of how it started. And every week I try to find somebody who is taking their 2020 lemons and turning it into 2022 lemonade. We're coming to the end of 2021. Right. We did our, it's done. We, but we, we, you know, at this point, let's start with the 2022 branding. Yeah. If the decorations are up, yeah. I could do my 2022 branding. Yeah. And uh, yeah, and that's sort of how it started. So either it's introspective, funny, and now I'm starting to bring guests back on. And what I'm finding is, all the people who love me talking by myself don't love me with guests oh, and all the people funny. who love me with guests don't like me talking by myself. So you just haven't had want, the right guests yet. That's us. Us. Yes. Yeah, I mean, you know what it. I want to do is we could just take this interview and it'll look like I'm interviewing you. <laughs> yeah. No, it's gotta be from your perspective where that, where I get to say, um, back to us, Tom, right. Our turn. All right. And then could Alyssa edit the episode for me too? I don't know. Like, she says, says yes. yes. I'm, I'm like, I'm not going to commit for her. Because I got a feeling this 51 minute conversation is going to turn into three minutes. Three no. minutes later, you're like, no. hi, I'm Tom Kelly. I have a podcast. I'm single. We're like, thanks for coming. There you go. And <laughs> I'm <laughs> on the show. <laughs> com. Yeah. Oh, go like my TikTok. Go like all my TikToks. I, I find TikTok so frustrating. That's I a good idea. Viral. Where can we follow you? Why don't you tell our listeners where we can find so this you? Is a, oh, good. Let me end with the plugs then. Yeah. So yeah. I. Tom Kelly Show podcast. You can get it at TomKellyShow.com. I am Tom Kelly Show across social media, Instagram. I'm Tom Kelly Show on TikTok. I am Tom Kelly Show on Twitter. Uh, Tom Kelly Show on Facebook, though. The Facebook has gotten too messy lately. Hey, Tom, uh, are I'm you Tom Kelly Show? Tom Kelly Show on Venmo. Uh, Clap, Tom. Hold so on. Let's just say we're going to, hold on. I'm going to, we're going to finish, we're going to finish. We, yeah, we you didn't even drink once yet, Jesus. Tom. Um, Tom. We are going, cheers. cheers, cheers to you, cheers to Long Island, cheers to a, a new friendship, which we're going to keep going down, uh, down, down all, this, all of yeah. the Tom Kelly show channels. <laughs> all right. Yeah. yeah. And I think Tom Kelly is our new best friend. Yeah. Yes. And the Tom Kelly show. What yeah. is it? Uh, it's the Tom I think Kelly show I don't on think it's every that. social channel. Is it just channel. Tom Kelly show? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Let's look yeah. at it. Hold on. I should know this because he's going to get mad. Hold on. Let's just look at this. Just let me get it. At Tom Kelly show. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. He was great. And I, I'm going to hold his feet to the fire. We're going to be yeah. on his show. I can't wait to be on be, his show. Like, he's great. You know, you can just tell he's a true Long Islander. He just gets it. He's down he's to like, earth. what about me? Yeah. <laughs> Back to me. He, but you know what? But he is also down to earth and yeah, self-deprecating no, so and awesome. super honest yeah. and transparent. And that's I what that. I love about New Yorkers. So thank you, Tom Kelly, for being with us. And everyone, please follow Tom Kelly's show. We follow him on Insta. And he says, follow him. He'll follow you back. So uh, do it. You won't. <laughs> um, so now we're getting into, do we have time for celebrity? I'll let Alyssa determine Determine, this. yeah. But um, there's a lot of celebrity we were talking about. You were telling me. Yes. I got some celebrity. Yeah, go ahead. Um, Mariah Carey just dropped her new Christmas album on November 5th. Oh, my God. It's it's collaborations with Khalid. Oh. DJ Khalid. Uh, well, wait, there's DJ Khalid and then there's Khalid. Oh, is there a difference? <laughs> yeah. Really? Right, yeah. Get with it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah just for our listening, for okay. the T. For the T. So, Khalid, I Khalid. guess it just says. Because I'm like, DJ Khalid. Yeah, exactly. And then there's Khalid, different. Two different people? Yeah. Huh, I never knew that. I thought they were the same people. <laughs> I really did, honestly. <laughs> Okay. I really did. So we'll find out which one she yeah. has a collaboration right. with. But I never looked them up. But anyway, um, yeah, so she's got a new Christmas album. I don't know if you can ever top her <laughs> <laughs> what to want for Christmas. But oh, all I, I want for Christmas. Christmas. Yeah, I mean, no. But like her video is like her in a big sparkly red be, dress. She, she's just constant. Like she never gets, she's never gets old. No, no. It's Christmas season. She's fabulous. Yeah. That Mariah Carey. I love how she's like, Halloween's over. Yeah. So, boom. Time I for think me. everybody, it's, like, it's is your social season. media, like, yeah, blown how, up? She's with, Long like, Island, like, like, back to me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, back to me. <laughs> yeah. I love it. Uh, that's cool. And you know what? Somebody else that just dropped new music is Adele. <sighs> and I am like, I'm going to. We just as obsessed. As, as soon as I get, I yeah. cannot, I haven't listened to her whole uh, I keep album hearing yet. Easy On Me because it's, oh like, God. playing everywhere. But. She had, I can't wait to listen to all of it because it's kind of, it's about her divorce and, you know, going through it. And I love how like just open she is. Ugh, she's got I a, she's her. got a song called I Drink Wine. Oh, 
<laughs> we have to listen. Which I feel like we should uh, understand. Also, you know what came out this week is the Adams Family 2 movie. Oh, it did? Yeah. Oh, my God. Which, I, you know, which was funny. But did you hear that Snoop Dogg's in it? And yeah. And he plays Cousin Lit? Yeah. <laughs> you told me that when it was coming, when we were talking about it. That's I think hysterical. that's so funny. I love it. Um, also, really, really big news that my daughters have been, like, literally calling me about every five seconds. I wonder if, like, Harry Styles. Oh, my God. Our whole office is like, Harry Styles? I'm literally at a lunch with two legislators today. Oh, they're blowing them up? Kenzie is FaceTiming me like, Mom! Did you get on the MX? She's at school. (laughs) You're not going to believe the tickets we got. You are not going to believe it. (gasps) Uh, It's like, whatever, row one, like, section 110. Oh, my God. They they were in a weight room. They did the pre-sale. I don't know. I gave her my Amex card. I'm like, just you're a good mom. Whatever. Pre-sale. I don't know. She's sending me all this stuff. She's like, where are you going to be at noon tomorrow? I'm like, at a work lunch. She's like, can you get out of it? No. <laughs> to buy me her style tickets. I'm like, no. So it's his closing show, though. Wow. And yeah, it's his closing show. So it's a big deal. And it's the first real, it's the first show at UBS. It's in the new UBS arena. That's amazing. His closing show, huh? Yeah, he just announced it. Wow. Yeah, he's done several at, at Madison Square Garden. And then he just decided to have his last show at UBS That's Arena awesome. brand new and they open the 20th and his is on what the 26th That's awesome. 28th something like that. So uh in UBS Arena great partner of ours and I cannot wait. That venue is going to be epic. Oh my gosh. So That's going to be awesome. Yeah. So I'm Good really for re- Ken's. Yeah, I'm they're so going. Glad. They're going. I mean, listen, maybe I'll get tickets, who knows. I'm going to call some people. Yeah, <laughs> Caroline's like, "Give me tickets." Yeah, we should get a box or something. Oh, my Hello, God. Hello, the pod. We should record. I mean, it's Harry Styles. Everybody's <laughs> into it. So Caroline went and saw him at Barclay. At, at MSG. Oh, she went and saw him at MSG. She, like, yeah, she said it was she awesome. She said it was amazing. She yeah. said, like, there's a, a wrestling match that takes place on the basement and um, in, at MSG. And, yeah. like, she's watching... The, she heard that the lights on the on the wrestling match were like swaying back and forth from everybody jumping. Yeah, I mean everybody loved it, and I think she she was saying like the energy was so amazing, and and especially when it's your last show oh, on God, the tour, yeah. that is really going to be. I mean, what a cool get for UBS yeah. Arena yeah, in Belmont. Absolutely. So to especially to open up that new incredible facility. So and um, we're really excited. Uh, we've got some teasers coming up for you because. The next week is going to be our last show before we're not going to do one the week of Thanksgiving. Right. We're, we're just going to replay. We're going to live I our think. lives. Yeah. Uh, turns out. So next week we're going to give you our favorite recipes, some Thanksgiving tips. Yeah. I'm excited for that one. Yeah. I'm excited too because I love Thanksgiving. We're getting ready. I call it fat girl fall. It's. <laughs> I was like, we're here for hot girl summer. Now it's fat girl fall. <laughs> I love I'm it. like, where's the stuffing? Oh my God. That's okay. hysterical. And the cream corn. And I love it. I can't wait. The broccoli wait. rice casserole. I love it. Wait, broccoli what? Broccoli rice casserole. Broccoli cheese oh, casserole. What? I never had that. Oh my God. Girl, if there, if it can be made in a crock pot on Heck Thanksgiving. Yeah. Heck yeah. <laughs> I'm here Bring for it. it. And the Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade. Oh, we all live for it. I know. And it's back on the route. And this is such a New York thing. And so um, anyway, we are going to give you all of our Thanksgiving tips next week. And until then, thanks for tuning in. Cheers. Cheers.